Hi, it's Mark McIntyre here. I'm the Meteor Section Director for the SPA and also one of the coordinators of the UK Meteor Network. There's been so much excitement about this asteroid that entered the Earth's atmosphere earlier in the week that I thought it'd be useful to give you a bit of information, telling you what we know about it so far um, and what we found. I'm going to start off by telling you a bit about what we knew about it before it entered the Earth's atmosphere. So it was discovered on the, on the 12th of February by two teams in Eastern Europe at about 20 past eight in the evening. And that was about seven hours before uh, it was predicted to hit the Earth. It was very faint when it was first detected about magnitude 18. It did brighten to about magnitude 11 uh, as it went into the Earth's shadow. Um, and it was predicted to hit the Earth at about 2.59 in the morning, somewhere over Western France. Um, it probably weighed about one and a half to one and three quarter tons and was about a meter in diameter. Uh, it was traveling about nine or 10 kilometers a second, according to the calculations at the time. This was all very exciting because normally we don't get much advanced warning of these things. In this case, we had about seven hours warning to get, get things lined up. Now, uh, the UK Meteor Network and Frippon, which is the French equivalent, have cameras running all the time. And at the top left here, you can see a compilation of video footage from some of the UK MON cameras. You can see how the, when it, uh, the asteroid uh, burns up, it totally whites out the camera briefly. The top right picture is uh, some webcam footage from, uh, I think, the seafront somewhere on the south coast of England. You can see the meteor lighting up the sky as it goes across. Pictures across the bottom of various amateur uh, photo photographs taken, two of them in France, and one is actually from the UK Meteor Network again. These are all pretty exciting, these pictures, because it gives a lot of data about its trajectory across the sky. And that means that we can calculate things like its orbit. You can see that at the top right there. Um, showing it come an asteroid probably from the main belt of the asteroids. Uh, you can see a trajectory in the center at the bottom and its velocity at the bottom right. Um, and we can calculate all of these kind of things um, with the data that we have. This is really important because it lets us calculate how likely it was to leave meteorites on the ground. So the next stage that we go through is, as you can see here, picture at the top right, a top left, sorry, that is showing the trajectory across the across the ocean. The blue line is the trajectory across the ocean. We then lose sight of the of the meteor because it cools down and it slows down and it's no longer lighting up the sky. Uh, and it enters what's called dark flight. Now we have to model its behavior during that time. And there are lots of different ways you can do that. The simplest one you can see here, we pretty much said, okay, went a straight line, where would it land? Somewhere in that red box. And then we do more sophisticated analysis. We take into account the wind in particular across the site. Meteorites can be strongly affected by the wind. Little pieces of rock can get blown a long way off track and the heavier ones won't get blown so much. And so you tend to get this kind of shape to the fall zone. You can see there, there's a kind of a banana shape, yellow shape. That's the fall zone based on predictions of different masses, the lightest ones at one end and the heaviest at the other. And if you look right across at the right hand side of that picture, the red dot, that corresponds with where we think a one kilogram piece would have landed. Nothing that heavy was found, but if it had been, that's kind of where it would have gone. So you can do that sort of analysis um, and then you send out teams and they do a ground search, literally walking, you know, fingertip search of the ground. And as you know, some pieces have been found. So far, seven pieces have been found. In fact, as of about an hour ago, uh, according to Twitter, um, teams in from CAMS, VGCL, and Frippon are searching the ground. Um, and the largest piece, about 100 grams at the top left there. Um, in the center, you can see the team that found it, the lady that's pointing at it in the exact center is the student that actually picked that piece up. And that's pretty exciting for her, I'm sure. And at the bottom right, there's a much more typical kind of sized piece nestling in the grass. Most of the pieces are pretty small. Uh, it hasn't got a classification yet, but it looks like it's probably a stony meteorite from, from the pictures that we can see here. Now, what's also cool for me is that we've got some data from before uh, it entered the Earth's atmosphere. The uh, observatories calculated its orbit, and that's how they knew it was going to hit the Earth. But we also calculated its orbit from the data that we picked up on the video cameras. And you can see from these two sets of numbers that they're really similar. And that's important because it tells us that our calculations are pretty good. It tells us that when we're calculating that fall zone, the strewn field where we might find meteorites, uh, the sums that we're doing are good. And so we've got a good chance of finding things in the next time there's a fall over the UK, uh, which I'm really hopeful there will be at some point soon. So that's all we know so far. Uh, seven pieces of rock have been found so far, uh, a few hundred grams left over of that one and a half ton asteroid as it burned up through the atmosphere. Um, if you want to know more about this, you could keep up with what's happening on Twitter by following the SPA uh, on Twitter or Mastodon. Uh, you can follow the UK Meteor Network on Twitter and VGCL, the guys that are doing the search in France also have their own Twitter account. Um, and so that's about everything that we know so far. I will keep you posted as more things happen. Thanks very much for listening.